I am Akash, and this is your News of the Week for the week of June 20th to June 26th, 2021. Let's take a look at our stories for this week. First off, the former police officer who killed George Floyd exactly a year and a month ago, Derek Chauvin, has been convicted and found guilty of counts on two degree... Let's, let's do it again. Hello, friends! I'm Akash, and this is your News of the Week for the week of June 20th to June 26th, 2021. Let's start off with our very first story of the week. The former police officer, Derek Chauvin, has been found guilty and has been sent for 22 and a half years in prison for the murder of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. Now, he was convicted and upheld by the jury in a Minnesota state trial presided over by Judge Cahill, Judge Peter Cahill. And he was the one who handed down the sentence, second degree manslaughter, second degree unintentional murder, and third degree murder. Now, prosecutors said that Derek Chauvin should be held in jail for 30 years. The family of George Floyd said he should be given the maximum sentence possible. Meanwhile, Chauvin's attorney said that he should only receive probation and time served. So eventually, Judge Cahill laid down the reasons for his sentencing, and so it was made. 22 and a half years in prison for Derek Chauvin for the killing of George Floyd. And so this is a way to show the world that no matter what, truth and justice will always win. And this is actually the longest and perhaps the most harshest um, sentencing ever given to an officer formerly in the duty of law. Formerly. Now, the next one I want to talk about is actually Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day, everyone. It was on June 20th. I want you to know, I want to know what you did for Father's Day. So, make sure to comment it below. Next, let's take a look at our COVID updates. Now, the good news is 10% of the whole world has officially been vaccinated with COVID-19, the vaccines, which is perfect. We've been vaccinated with vaccines. It's great, 10% of the world's population. And in fact, the United States, almost half of the population of the adults have been vaccinated with a vaccine. So the total is 150 million. But that actually means we won't be able to see the official goal that President Biden set of having 70% of America's population officially reach the vaccination full level. And by the way, for that, we'll need 230 million vaccinations completed. So that is some great news. And by the way, after helping its own people, America is now officially ready to help the rest of the world. And so we've sent vaccines and other equipment to India, Brazil, and other affected countries. Brazil actually has just passed the mark of 500,000 deaths, which is ridiculous. And that means the situation is horrible. And in fact, India's situation used to be just as bad. The good thing is, now it's a lot better. We only have 40 to 50,000 cases per day in India, and we're doing our COVID Update India section here, and we only have 1,100 deaths per day. Now, this may sound like a lot, and it is, but it's a major improvement from the hundreds of thousands of deaths that we've seen in the past month. So to see that the counter is a lot down is great. But there's another major concern on the rise, and that's the Delta variant of COVID-19. It is incredibly dangerous, and President Biden made some remarks about it. Um, and in this, he said that anyone who's not fully vaccinated will have to risk getting infected with COVID-19. And so that's why we say to you, get vaccinated if you haven't already, if you can. Make sure to get vaccinated. It's very important. And stay safe. Now, that ends our COVID update section. Let's take a look at general politics, starting with the Taliban insurgency in Afghanistan, which has entered two cities. 
Meanwhile, the U.S. troops are planning to leave Afghanistan by September. This is the plan that America had made, and it's going to be one that America is planning to keep. So, that's something that's going on, but the major problem is that if the U.S. withdraws from the war in Afghanistan, that means that the Taliban insurgency has a huge new vacuum. And this vacuum means that they can just go occupy the rest of the country with almost no offense, no defense coming back to fight them. So this means that Taliban's offensives may actually work, which is actually bad news for America because of the barbaric things that the Taliban has done in the past. And so even then, things have still gotten worse. There's still bad blood between America and the Taliban as uh, peace talks between the two have failed completely. There have not been much that has come out of the peace talks, although to be fair, the two countries are saying that they remain committed and they do periodic um, talks, but in the end, not much seems to have come out of it. So we'll have to see what happens and I hope that the situation in Afghanistan can resolve to a safe and peaceful ending. Now, the next story I want to talk about revolves around Hong Kong. So you may know that a few years ago, there were a lot of pro-democracy protests campaigning for peace and freedom after China implemented an extradition law, which pretty much said we can just pick anyone in Hong Kong for trial in Beijing or Shanghai or Guangzhou, for example. So this was not received very well by the Hong Kong public, so they protested for freedom and for peace. Then China started a giant crackdown on the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement, and now it seems like they're doing it again. They forced a, they raided first a pro-democracy newspaper by the name of Apple Daily. It's really popular among Hong Kong pro-democracy. And so they forced it to shut down. After that, officials literally said they would be censoring any film which they thought was promoting independence from China. So this means that things are very bad. Again, there's more bad blood between China and Hong Kong as a result of this. And they're also going through some sort of election reform process in which they say only patriots can be allowed to, to run for president or leader, which by patriot they literally just mean those who are loyal to China. So things are not going that well in Hong Kong, and I hope that things change. Now, this is another story we're taking a look at here along politics, and that's that Vice President Kamala Harris is visiting the U.S.-Mexico border. Again, she reiterated to all the would-be immigrants to do not come, very bluntly, but that's because this is a very apt time to visit the border as there's an ongoing immigration crisis happening right now. And this is quite dangerous that's happening. And doing so by crossing the border is illegal and it's against the law. So do not come, Vice President Harris said, and at the border. Now, our next story is actually quite grim. A condominium apartment building in Miami has partially collapsed, leaving at least four dead and multiple injured. And although 35 have been rescued, but only from the intact part of the building, there are 195 missing people as a result of this collapse. There's an investigation going on right now as I speak that's trying to figure out what is going on and why this collapse happened. And by the way, the authorities are already on the move and they're trying their best to clear out all the rubble and save as many people as they can. Many organizations and people have come to help. The American Red Cross and even the NBA's Miami Heat, which is incredible. And also, of course, the president has been briefed about the incident. The Florida governor declared a state of emergency in the region and FEMA is now on their way to help those injured. So this is a major, uh, I guess it's a major catastrophe with this building collapse in Miami and I hope it'll be ending soon. And now for the last story of the week. 
it's Windows 11. And I know this is a stark contrast to the other stories this week, but Microsoft's Windows 11 has finally been announced to the public on June 24th. Now, this is quite awesome, and I'm super excited for this update. There's many new changes, all of the the windows will be rounded, it's easier to make split screens, and you can also, the taskbar is all in the bottom center now, and also updates are 40 times, or 40% faster than they used to. So this is great news, and what they're going to do is they're going to first release it to Windows Insiders for beta testing. And then after that, they're going to release it to the general public. And by the way, it's going to be free updates for anyone who already uses Windows 10. So that is great news. I'm super pumped. I know you are too. And that is all of the news of the week for the week of June 20th to June 26th, 2021. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with some more news of the week. Goodbye.